Let's start this story at the beginning. Oh, okay, Roy. You start it, and we'll help out with a little music. Well, it all started back in Texas a long time ago. Now down Texas way, a river flows. Where it comes from, nobody knows. Where it's going, don't no one care. Just doggone glad it's a leaving there. That there's the Pecos River. Pure alkali. Just naturally mean water. Why, the buzzards won't even touch it. Into this fertile garden spot, once there come a prairie cart. There was Ma and Pa and 16 brats and four hound dogs. Yeah, and a couple of cats. All a-going west, a-looking for elbow room. Crossing the Pecos River bit, Bill fell out and lit on his head. Folks didn't even know he was gone. Old wagon just kept rolling along. Poor little Bill. Long come night and a prairie moon. Old Ma fly over her hurry and home. She was due for a shot, got her journeys, and for the stork had delivered a dividend. You guessed it, it was little Bill. Curled up and fast asleep with Ma's puss. Bill looked up and then he grinned. <laughs> Ma's old heart just plum caved in. Bill seen right off that he needn't fear. He'd stake himself a claim right here. Yep, Bill made himself right to home. Giant up with that there coyote outfit. Become a right good coyote, too, Bill did. And that's how Pegasus Bill growed up tougher than any coyote pup. I guess Bill kind of had the knack for it, because soon he was the boss of that there coyote pup. Yeah, but little Bill couldn't rest till he'd proved himself the A-1 best. And in a year, or maybe two, he was a boss all them other varmints, too. And one day, across the burning sand, a stranger come to the pen. The usual committee, hungry buzzards, was there today to welcome their guest in the usual way. It was a little cold, and that flock of buzzards was all set to make a meal out of it. Poor little feller, lost. Did be plum tucker down. Thought still full of spirit. And he was up putting up quite a battle. Now, 50 to 1 weren't no fair fight. But one plus Bill made it just about right. <coughs> Them graveyard chickens was scattered plum to the furthest corners of Kingdom Come. Bill and that horse had won the day. And that's how come the old met Winnemick. Yes, sir, it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Once he wrote the raging cyclone out of nowhere. Then he straddled it and settled down with ease. And while that cyclone bucked and flitted, take us, roll the smoke and lit it. And he tamed that ornery wind down to a breeze. So if you hear started shooting up their little game. He gave them redskins such a shake-up that they jumped out of their makeup. That's the way to paint a desert got its name. So you be I A I A you be I O for the toughest critter west of the Alamo. And then old man Fate started dealing from the bottom of the deck. For down the stream come a young female, a riding a catfish as big as a whale. And the minute he seen her, Pecos knew that he was in love with Sue but Sue. Bill was a goner. Right then and there, he asked Sue to marry him. Hey, naturally, Sue agreed on uh, certain conditions. Yep, first off, Sue wanted Bill to get her a bust. You know, one of those do funnies made of steel and wire? All the fashionable women used to wear them. Yeah, right where they sat down, right smack in the back of their lap. And Bill got it for her. Yep, he come up with the springiest, the strongest steel bustle the world has ever seen. Yeah, sure, if you give it just one tap with your hand, you could hear it spring like this. <laughs> but that wasn't the worst. When the wedding day come, Sue insisted on riding to the preacher's house on Widowmaker's back. That was plum humiliating. Why, Widowmaker, he'd never let no one but Bill ride him. 
But it didn't bother Sue. Why, she walked right up to that critter's side, and her gentle hand touched his bristling height. Her foot found a stirrup, and with the flick of her bustle, Sue was aboard, and sought right there for the tussle. And then that springy steel bustle started to... And... 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 and, and underneath them frills and plouches, Sue was developing plenty of bounces. She's got to be more than that gal could handle. And Sue took off, like a rolling candle. Yep, Sue shot straight up in the air, and when she come down, she landed smack on that bustle and went straight up again. And soon it was plain to the multitude that Sue was again in altitude. It sure looked like she was a gunner. But no, here come a ray of hope. Look, it were Bill and his trusty rope. He had darn soon put a stop to this. Shucks, Bill has never knowed to miss. While Bill had it all figured out, next time Sue come down, he'd throw his lasso around her. And then ease her down to the ground, kind of gentle-like. And then the wedding could proceed as per schedule. But Widowmaker, he seen what Bill had in mind. And when nobody was looking, he put his foot on Bill's rope so that when he throwed it, it'd fall short. But poor Bill, he didn't know about this. He built his loop with careless ease, judged his distance, stuck his finger in the air and tested the breeze. In a whirl, a twirl, and a twist of the wrist, he let her go. Oh, but the champagne missed. Bill never could figure out how he come to miss. But Widowmaker, he knew. And as for Sue, she was off again on her heavenly flight. Up, up, she went clean out of sight. Till far out into space, this unfortunate maid finally come to the moon. And that's where she stayed. Move along, blue shadow. In the state of Texas, USA, life still goes on in the same old way. And the Pecos River still flows on. But the greatest cowboy on earth is gone. Yep, Bill went back to the coyotes, but he never forgot to. And every night when the moon riz high, he'd lift his voice in mournful cry, bewailing the fate of his lady bear, his long lost love in the sky up there. So painful was his grief to see, the coyotes joined in out of sympathy. And that's how come to this very day, Coyotes howl at the moon that way. 